tribes on Sinai's high In ancient times did give the law In cloud and majesty and awe Rejoice, rejoice about the O Antiphons, and of course they are part of the evening prayer of the church. Uh, a lot of priests and nuns would say this, the monks say it, contemplative orders. Some lay people say the it's known as the divine office. So the last seven days before uh, Christmas Eve, the evening prayer has psalms and other prayers readings, but it always has all year round Mary's canticle. So that's in the Gospel of Luke, my soul magnifies the Lord. So the antiphon is a little one line that you sing or say before you say the whole prayer of Mary. And then you say it at the end again. Sometimes you say it between the verses or you sing it. So these uh, seven days, these are the great antiphons, the great high point of Advent is leading us into Christmas Eve. And the basic message is, these are the titles of Jesus, the great Lord and he's going to come and save us and help us. And so it's wonderful stuff. And it's this heightened longing from deep within is what, what these anaphons bring out. That we're really, that's why they start with, oh, it's like a, a plea to God. Oh, you know. So the one we, the second day, the 18th, is Lord. Jesus says Lord. And the uh, word from Hebrew is Adonai. So, oh, Adonai, come to us. What, what does this have to do with? Well, Isaiah had... These seven titles they took from Isaiah, the prophet, in the 7th century B.C., talking about the Messiah. So that's where these were kind of called from. And then they started doing this around 700 A.D. So for 1,300 years, people have been doing these leading up to the Christmas experience at the end of Advent. So Adonai has to do with, as you might have heard in the song, what God did on Mount Sinai, what God did for the Israelites, that he is Lord, not an inferior being, not a partially powerful angelic being. He is Lord over all. And so he takes Moses up, you know, to the Mount Sinai, sees the burning bush. He leads the Israelites out of Egypt. God, you know, kind of wipes out the Egyptians. He shows his mighty power as Lord. And then Moses on Mount Sinai gets the Ten Commandments. And all kinds of things happen after that. But we say God is Lord. And now we understand the second person in the Trinity is always active. Well, all three persons of the Trinity are active in whatever God's doing, going back to the creation and till the end of the world but, uh, and beyond. But we say the second person, the one who gets involved with creation and makes things happen, the one who became incarnate. So the church started to understand the Lord that did the great things on Mount Sinai and led the Israelites and established them in the Promised Land. That Lord is Jesus. Jesus is the Lord. So we're saying, come to us and bring that power that you helped save the Israelites and form them. Bring that power even in a more power in a more wonderful way, of course, because now Jesus has become incarnate at Christmas, like one of us. So we're saying, oh Adonai, oh Lord, come, Lord of might and power, come to us and help us and help us live according to your good news of the Holy Gospel. So we hope you have a wonderful Advent as we continue these anaphones. <laughs>